Hey everybody, welcome back to Ready Steady Play where we have just finished playing Rococo and the Jewelry Box Expansion, the original 2015 version, but now we're going to talk about it to see if we can help you guys figure out whether you want to back the new Eagle Griffin version that's you, currently on pre -order. You said 2013 episode 1, 2015 now, and it actually came out in 2014. No, I think it did come out in 2013. I think it might have done it, won the it, it was nominated for 2014 Kenneth Wheel, so I think, but, I think it, but still... So there you go. A game that comes out across time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the coming new version's out in November, I believe. They're going to be delivering this year. And it's available to pre order until 23rd of March. So, this is a game with an interesting theme where you're making dresses for the court of King Louis XV. And by making wonderful dresses, there are, by the way, four kinds of dresses that you can make. Although you do have some choice over the color of the inlay. But yeah. very little. It's either black or the same color as the dress. <laughs> yeah. Um, Pretty much. And dress any necessarily dress doesn't mean dress. It could mean coat. It, it can mean dre <laughs> dress coat. Yeah. Yeah, a suit. We don't want a... Yeah. Gentleman's suit. A gentleman's suit. Suit, sure. suit jacket. Yeah. Which anyone can wear. So this is a, it's a Euro-style game of resource management and hand management. Like deck building, area control. Bit of action management. selection. Yeah. Yeah, bit of everything, really. Right, so, Chris, this is you, a game that you really like. Yeah, yeah, I really like it. I think I've mentioned it many times of on mm -hmm. various episodes, a various we, series. we discussed it in essence, Chris. Well, it's, I'm glad we had a chance Maybe to sort well. of get, like, a classic game on the channel, you know, because we often play sort of the new stuff, and obviously this new reprint has allowed us to revisit a classic, Yeah, well, or what is you, widely considered to be a classic. You never really wanted to put it on the channel um, when people couldn't buy it, right? Yeah, that was my primary concern, is that uh, if people saw us playing it and got excited, they couldn't go out and buy it. And generally speaking, I'm not very good at keeping to that rule anyway, because we play a lot of Kickstarters you, you try. and stuff. But I try my best. <laughs> uh, there was there was a copy of this this version in at Essen, I saw for like 80 euro. I mean, you can get this version, but it's it's expensive. It's like I think I bought it was like 27 pounds back yeah, in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't expensive back then. But yeah, I've, I've played it a, a lot of times. I've played it every player count. Um, not solo. To, but I don't. I don't know if there is a solo version yet. There is a new version. I know. Um, and I just. I don't. I. I just really like it. I don't know why. I just think. I love the pastiche element of it. The fact that it has a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's. For, I think. I personally think it's very good at the whole simple to learn, difficult to master. Um, I think it has nice. It has multiple paths to victory, uh, in in but but I don't think you can win by totally going down one. No, but you, you got to diversify you, a bit. You got to diversify a bit, yeah. Which may be a negative for some people, but I guess you can't just totally focus on one thing. But when when I say it's multiple paths to victory, I, what I mean is you can, whilst having your fingers in lots of pies, you can still focus on one. You can still um, focus on more heavily on one path. Um, but yeah, I just I, I just think I find it incredibly pleasing and satisfying. It looks very beautiful. I, th mm. I think, um, and it's the I like unusual themes, and this is a theme that for some reason I really enjoy, even though I have no interest in fashion dresses at all. I don't know. I like the historical element to it. How do you feel the theme comes out in it? I I, I feel like I've been transported into the court of Louis the Fifteenth. <laughs> do you really? I, I, yes. I think I the do. artwork goes a long way towards doing mm. it. Um, I found that the one like I do I like the theme. I like the art. I find the theme intriguing. The one thing that kind of took me a bit out of the theme, actually, was the limited art on the dress tiles. Yeah. Because is, it feels which, like it's all about is, making uh, dresses, and yet we're only making four yeah, different yeah, kinds, yeah, 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 and they're all, like, the same. So that's you know? definitely rectifying the new version. Well, that's a good sign. This definitely is. So, oh, well. And they're actually doing a mini option expansion where you have dresses from all around the world. See, like they're, Chinese dresses, they're, uh, Japanese dresses, Belgian they're dresses. They're very slightly different. <laughs> Yeah, it's, they're not no, quite I think, distinct I think it's, fair, it's a fair criticism, but uh, but yeah, um, I suppose it's more. It's, it's, I suppose it's visually very easy to see what's what. I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, although one thing that I've heard uh, point out, which actually is about, is a thing, is a, is a bit of a problem, is the fact that the colors are the same as the player colors. Yeah. Um, which again has been it's changed the new version. Mm. So like, if you look at this and you're like, for a second, your brain's going, wait, is that green or is that belong to green or belong to blue? Yeah. You know? There is. Um, I think in the rule book it does say like, uh, please note that the colors of the dresses do not correlate with player colors. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it actually states that, which yeah. is quite quite amusing. But um, you know that uh, small gripe aside, I find it I found it very uh, 
very appealing. I, I I didn't feel like there was a lot of downtime at three players. How did mm-hmm. you think? How do you find it at five? At five, there's a there is a little bit of downtime. Yeah, even at four, it's not too bad actually. Yeah, but at five, it does it does uh, get a little bit. But it's, it's still I've played at five a few times. It's still fun. It's still like a lot less than some games I've yeah. played at two player. You know, it's it's. Uh, is that sort of sense of you took my thing much exacerbated at five? Yeah, I think it's probably worse at, I was just worst at say, three I mean, and five. Yeah, uh, but worst five, at three and five. Yeah, but five in particular because because um, at fa- at three there's more of these available. Obviously, they decide the same number of these guys available for mm. each turn. Where and at five there's still that many available, and then this is bigger, but there's twice to uh, add at four. Two, yeah, yes, yeah, four each, four in each of these mm. at four and five. Um, and the fountains and, bigger, and yeah, there's three fountains on the reverse side of the board of each type. Um, but at three and five, you're basically at the max. You're at the maximum uh, capacity of the board side you're playing on. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so area control is tightest at three and five. Yeah. Um, That's probably good, right? Yeah. No, I think I think as a result, of it, I, I I've I've played it two maybe two or three times, and it's it's I I still like it too actually. Um, but it's definitely best with three up. But yeah, I can see that. I, I, like you say, Chris, I just find it incredibly pleasing. Pleasing. I, I, word for I, it, yeah. I, I haven't... Everything about it, like you say, the thing that you might find annoying about it, or not annoying, maybe the wrong word, maybe frustrating, such as the downtime, like waiting mm-hmm. for others, or um, someone taking your go, that... Although they are frustrating, I don't. I never feel like being annoyed by the game by that. It's because there's enough there to try and... Um, uh, give you different options. Yeah, there's enough. Yeah, exactly. It's even like like the whole thing with the queen's favor, right? If if, if everything's in your control. Yeah. If you're not, um, if you if you want. Oh, to, there you, you go. To Michael sense. went first the entire game and still came last. So, queen's yeah. favor means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the th- I'm surprised you never took it because I was kind of piggybacking a little bit off getting B second for free. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was kind of the ball was kind of in your court to take it. Thing is, but, uh, it, being I, first is not necessarily being good because I always you get I wanted to take exactly. Yeah, yeah. I was quite yeah. well. I thought it's either best to be first or last. So I I was kind of like unless I really wanted. I was the second reason. the whole game. I won. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there you go. Maybe it's totally wrong. But I knew the game better, right? So yeah, you do. Yeah. I yeah. didn't want. to So be one first, would expect so. you to win by more than four <laughs> points, Chris. <laughs> It's, it's a, obviously it's, the it's second very, place handicap. It's, yeah, it must, must have been. It, but it, it is, um, I find something that I like about it as well is the fact I feel you have to work really hard for your points. Yeah. Like really hard. Yeah. Like, I was trying really hard to figure out a way to get that away from you in the last round and I was like two bucks short. It would have worked. Yeah, if, I, game if I'd gotten that I would have stonked, stonked it but I was two bucks short. Yeah, that was, really was lost me ten points in total. That's crazy when you think about it. Um, but yeah, you work so hard for your points. You work, yeah. I work, I work so hard for your money as well. But you well, like, it's it really is just like sort of a smorgasbord of very light Euro mechanics. Yeah, you know, it's just like a lot of a, the only thing that doesn't feel present here is drafting. You know, because there's a little bit of area control. There's a little bit of sort of like that, not exactly worker placement, but that kind of you took my spot kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah, there's a little yeah. bit of uh, hand management. There's a little bit of deck building, yeah. a little bit of sort of efficiency and action selection. Um, there's resource this little management. marketplace here as well, yeah. resource management. So it really is just like a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose it's primarily area control. I really? Guess. I would have said it's primarily sort of hand management. That's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Because I think like picking the right cards is kinda of, is pretty crucial, right? Yes. Yeah. I yeah. guess. Well the action's more than the cards even, but the cards lead into the actions. That's it's a small it's, sport. Everything it's, it's is very thing. interlinked. It's yeah. hard to say which particular mechanic stands out yeah. as the most I mean, I guess you're not going to win unless you're building dresses, right? Because, like, all of us... Oh, yeah, you have to build dresses. Like, had the most yeah. points in, like, a total sort of sum value from the dresses we put out here, right? And, so. and um... The decorations. decorations. The sure, de- but the I'm dresses thinking, far more. Yeah. yeah, the dresses, I think, are the biggest sum total of points, so... Um, and I think the, that that comes from uh, that comes from the hand management, doesn't it? Because if you don't have some kind of efficient way of getting these and making those, like you kept the guy around who gives you a free grab that action. Yeah, so I, I was running two of them. Yeah. Um, I was running. Oh, you had uh, an apprentice and a journeyman didn't doing it, didn't you? And I actually got rid of that oh, apprentice. I, 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 yeah, I deputed both at the end of the game. Yeah. But, but yeah, I had uh, I had my starting apprentice and I had Cecil. So Chris had two guys that gives him free grab cloth actions. And I got around that uh, issue by getting these guys yeah. who have a free make a thing action, so they can grab cloth and then just make a, th- a thing a with a discount with yeah. it. Um, and Michael got around it somehow. Well, he was he was uh, no, did decorations. He funded all. He got. A lot you just funded a lot more decorations. He saved, you saved what about 25, 30 Yeah, 
um, Livre. A lot of money on A lot of money. But it didn't help me out in the end because I didn't do the dresses or as many dresses. Yeah. And I, it's because I didn't have the ability to get the resources or buy them. Yeah, like, I, th- I feel like without some kind of economy to grab resources and make dresses like these guys, it's really hard to compete, particularly on the, uh, you know, on, on these. Because the decorations for these territory control areas are like the third tiebreaker or second tiebreaker, um, it's... it's I didn't get. <laughs> it's just not, uh, it's not enough, you know. Yeah, I mean, if these were just like full-on spots, that would be hugely, di- the game would be very different. Yeah. Yeah, it might be actually interesting if they, if magicians were the primary tiebreaker because then you could buy tiebreaker. There's no there's no tiebreaker. There's no um, uh, give to and fro of tiebreaker. Yeah. I've, I've won now. I've, now I've got one as well. Now I've got two. It's just buy it straight yeah. out. And the reason that why I was doing that was because you two had grabbed the dresses thing. So I was like, oh well, I need to focus on buying these spots. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh great, if the, that feeds into this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but clearly it didn't because they're, they're well, not financially, a real spot. Well, financially, <laughs> you actually handled this quite well. Mm. You you were actually okay with money, um, despite the fact you had the le- least income. Yeah, you, you saw that dress early on, uh, and you had the discounts on the decorations. Yeah, but I'm not sure actually that uh, I'm not sure really whether this spot was worth it. I'm not sure. for you. Yeah, maybe it long, was. I'm not sure. It's hard to say. But, but um, I tend to just buy a dress one. That's that's usually what I do. Mm-hmm. And then just try and get it because I, I had no dresses the first round, but I think by the end of the, end of the second round I had two or three mm-hmm. dresses. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what inspired me to get the dress one first, but uh, I think oh, I'll tell you what it was. It was I had this guy here that um, required me to put dresses in master slots. Right. So I was like, why? Well, I, I want to unlock him to get the points. So I'll take that and get the dresses out, and that'll be my sort of opening. The specialized apprentices here. who you can hire. If you meet the criteria, they, they, always, they always give you three points. They're, they're good. I wish they're, I, I they're wish great I if you get him. them early. <laughs> if you can get them in the second round, yeah. then so they're I really could have good. actually hired him on round three. You probably should have done. <laughs> I probably should have done because um, you'd have you had a really small deck. You'd have gotten to play him three times. So it's like nine points. Yeah, that's yeah. huge. Nine, that's, nine points is a lot in this game. You saying that's difficult? And that maybe that's just because you'd not. I had no uh, idea how the game worked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I assumed that filling the master slots would be really difficult. Yeah, and it just wasn't. It's no, it's, no, it's not. Just that's that's probably one of the easiest because you do that in gameplay. Well, well now I, I've yeah. actually for, I actually looked over them and I had literally no understanding of, uh, <laughs> of yeah which ones are easy and which ones are hard. And now I'm thinking back to what they did and I still have no idea. I'm glad but, uh, that uh, Michael did uh, mm. train the journeyman because otherwise we wouldn't use the expansion mm. stuff at all. <laughs> yeah, I got one thing down. <laughs> well, I'm actually, sure I must have filled these in. I think you probably did. Uh, I probably point. did. But we, we but, also, uh, we, I mean, we, really we, how you said that, some some of the expansion journeymen and masters were also in the deck. Uh, I mean, that's one, true. So, um, but uh, I do like the, the fact that you're getting to look through and by a, hiring a master or a journeyman of like, your choice. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I like being honest. I like the training aspect. I like the jewelry aspect. I just don't find an efficient use of resources. The time, the time we've tried it. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably should have like filled this up on the last round and trained an apprentice. Why would you do that? Oh, I didn't even have my only apprentice were in game scoring. Anyway. Why would you do that anyway? Well, no, I think I did actually fill this up. Is what I'm but saying. But why would you want to? I'm oh, because there's guys in there that give you points. Oh, I see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I think that's I think that's what. Um, no, no, it's not. Uh, yeah, this guy gives you points, and that guy. Oh, oh, a guy no, it's who, not in game scoring, but yeah, it's. Yeah, but uh, they, when you play them, they give you points, the and they would go straight into your hand. That That's one's true. that guy gives you points for having decorations. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, it's money. He gives points for every two dresses. Yeah. I mean, I think the main, the best fu- 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 uh, function of this would be to get one a, of the master who gives you nice end game scoring. And I, and I probably yeah. would have got there, but I was probably a round too late in getting. I'd be quite going yeah, six yeah, points for course. for a complete set of jewelry. I'd be quite interested to go down the, the full on jewelry strategy one sometime. If you have played a lot of Rococo and you know about the jewelry box strategies, let us know. Because Chris doesn't think the jewelry box is that good. I just don't think, I just don't think it's a particularly interesting expansion. It's just, it's just it's just like, here's an extra little module which doesn't really add a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. If you played, a, a, say, a, a, a blue guy up here and gave him a ring, and then you moved him up here, would the ring double as well? No, the ring just stays here in front of you. Just one point and one income. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, if, if, you, if you match... If you're, if you're buying... If you can get the cheap, you know, one of the cheaper guys and you buy a piece of... You buy, a piece of jewelry every time, and you're getting a free one of these every time. Then yeah, it's not too bad. I, mean, I I I guess it could work. I just feel it needs to be, it needs to be a little cheaper. The jewelry cost. Yeah. 
Yeah, although as far as we're... As far as we're aware, they're not modifying any of the rules in the new version, right? I don't believe so, no. All right, well... Maybe they they might... Who knows? Maybe they'll change little balancing things like he'll he'll cost 12 and stuff like that. But do you know what's cool is I would really like to play again and try the jewelry strategy. Yeah, I kind of so. would too. Even though, even though I've had ample opportunity, but I haven't done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every but time did, you get cold feet, first, you're like, I don't want to lose well, really hard. That's not true. The first time we ever played with this, I tried it and mm. I didn't like it. Yeah. So I was like, I didn't do it again. <laughs> I would like. I'm I'm now intrigued by it. We usually don't play with it when we play. Well, we'll play with it again. Okay. See, there you go. That's the review. We'll play it again. <laughs> I would play it again. Yeah. Totally. I would buy it. Yeah, but would you buy it for a hundred dollars? No, I already have. Really? That's I was going to ask you. Yeah, of course. I've already bought it. Are you going to buy it now? Um, I'm very torn because I really want to buy it. It's very expensive. See, <laughs> I really want to buy it. And the second you just told me $100, I think that's too expensive. So what you, is that, you, like 80 you were quid? Saying, yeah. You were saying you were going to buy it anyway, just, just yeah. based on how much I like it. Yeah, pretty and much. Then, and then... But then you thought I might as well play it first. Maybe because we're buying it. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, Michael. I'll buy it for 40 quid. <laughs> but, Michael, if we want all the content, it's $130. Uh, yeah, for metal coins and... And the extra expansions. The dresses There's two around, new expansions. Around the country dresses, around See, the world why dresses. That, why is that so expensive when it was originally 27 because they had to pay you know tool to do new art. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. well, uh, to be f- and to be version, fair, there's like this... the queen's favor is gonna be like a little miniature as well, like a bust or something. Uh, <laughs> this game, so it's, yeah, it's gonna be super pimped up. But also, this version has quite limited art. Even though the art is fitting and appropriate, obviously, all of these dudes, there's only three bits of art. Yeah, and all of these dresses, there's basically four bits of art. Yeah, you know, um, and that's why it's a lot cheaper. Whereas in the new one, I imagine it's going to be a the lot more... The new one is super pumped, uh, pimp, pumped, pimped, pimped and, and yeah. diversified and all that. Well, Eagle Griffin games tend to do super pimped things. Yeah. That's kind of their... With the bracket they've leaned into. Yeah. Particularly with the Vitalis games, for example. All yeah. of his games are like... I mean, $100. even... I, I, I haven't, I'm not certain, but I, from the pictures, it even looks like it's the same shape and size of the Vitalis yeah. boxes. Well, they, I mean, they use that for... I mean, uh, I've got Railways of the World up there, which yeah. is Eagle Griffin games. It's basically the same size as a Vitalis Yeah, well, the escape plans on top of it, and it's the same, same size, I know Mars is there too. So do you know what this? I mean, in summary, do you know what this feels like to me? Just kind of like a really robust classic. Yeah. You know, I don't. I'm not like like Hansa. <laughs> yeah, like Hansa or like uh, Puerto Rico or something like that. You know, just sort of like um, or Orleans. You know, mm. I'm like it's now. I'm struggling to find the standout mechanic, but I think that's because when this came out, it probably was sort of quite standout, and now it's like, it's become so in, such an inspiration to other things. Yeah. It feels more familiar. But, I don't, but it's not, but, yeah, but, even when it came, I mean, maybe when it came out, it, had, it was more standout, but as you say, but it, it has gone more for a pastiche feel mm. of mechanics than, than, than leaning into one thing that we're going to do uniquely or really well. Mm. You know, like games, it's like when I, criticized, I was criticizing um, Death May Die just because I felt like it didn't do anything new. Um, did this do anything new now? Definitely not. And and at the time, maybe, maybe not. But it, it the, the new, quote-unquote, new thing it did was was um, the, the, the blend. Mm-hmm. It was a new... It's a new blend, I think, of, 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 uh, of mechanics. Mm-hmm. Rather than saying, we're going to do deck building better than anyone's done deck building, or we're going to do deck building with this unique twist that no one's ever done. Mm. Instead, it was just like, bit of this, bit of that, you know? And um, and weird enough, they actually have done this somewhat unique deck building aspect where you take the card into your hand and the selecting your cards rather than drawing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that so that deck building aspect is actually quite unique. Uh, I don't know another game that does that. That sort of hand management element. Um, I'm sure there are other games that have used that, but I'm off the top of my head, I'm struggling to think of them. Yeah, it probably are, as you say. But but yeah, I think the blend is unique. And I like uh, I like how tight. The, ter- the the contested yeah. spots are you know it's like is there like five things there you know um yeah. and by the end of the game we're filling those rooms up pretty quickly yeah yeah it's definitely a nice little nice sense of progression not engine building but you you, you so it's not, there, there is no engine building so I don't mean that you're li- li- this this literally but your engine so to speak gets more efficient as the game goes on well, you can't buy it, but you can pre-order the new one for hundred dollars. <laughs> or you can, you might be able to find this on the secondary yes. market, especially if people are buying the new deluxe version. They might be selling this version. Yeah, this at a version might come cost. down in value. Yeah. yeah, then you can buy Chris's for a tenner. I'll put his email in the description below. <laughs> no, I'll buy it for a tenner first. <laughs> <laughs> no, hundred for you. 
130. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on this Rococo journey with us, guys, and uh, hanging out in the court of Louis the Fifteenth, Cannibal King, and we'll see you all tomorrow for a new story. Was the Cannibal King joke on on camera, or was that really confusing for them? <laughs> I don't know. I forgot. Bye. <laughs> And let's know, uh, <laughs> let know if you want us to put a new version of the channel when it comes out in November. Ooh, you can join oh. them tomorrow for a new adventure. I said that. Come back tomorrow for a new story. Oh, okay. Click the button. See why my eyes are so Subscribe, <laughs> notifications, uh, things. Yeah, yeah, leave a comment. Ring leave the bell. Like. Ring the bell. Icon. Mm. Bell icon. Yeah. I think icon's a buzzword, isn't it? Yeah. Race say play. Notifications. Boom. Bye. <laughs> We've waved already. Yeah. It reminded me. I said this to you Pastiche. before, and I don't know if you if if I'm correct in this, but it reminded me a lot of taverns of Tiefen Val. I mean, I don't really get that at all, but that's oh, okay. fine. Damn it. <laughs> I haven't played that. The fact that you've got to do like I mean, both have action, action selection, but, an action selection, but the the I mean, so the the main difference. I mean, wow! I don't want to start the final thoughts of the main differences between Tevins and Teeth and Thal. Well, uh, let's just scrap that. Okay. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say it's the dice drafting, right? Like in Teeth and Thal, you're drafting actions. Oh, of course. And then also in Teeth and Thal, you were deck building, but you reveal at random from the top of the deck, so you're trying to mitigate. Oh, that's a one key where, difference. Yeah. Whereas in this, you're picking actions from a deck of cards, and there's a bit of hand management. Okay, so. Michael, edit that out. Yeah, I'll probably cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tag it on the end. Yeah. <laughs>